Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the book of Jude. So even before we could start with our session, can I request one of us to pray? Anita, can you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, ma'am. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. As we come before, before you, Lord, I would like to give this class into your hand, Lord. Bless us, Lord, and help us to understand from your word, Lord. As we are learning the epistle of Jude, Lord, help us to learn from what you want to teach us, Lord. Yes, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, welcome again. Uh, as we study the book of Jude, the book of Jude is also known as the book of false ministry, where Jude is addressing on the false teaching and the false teachers who are creeping into the church. So even before we could go into the detail, we should know something about the author. So the author of this book is Jude himself. But then during uh, the time of New Testament, when Jude was there, there are several other people in the name of Jude or Judas, which was a very common name, just like how we had the name of James. So this name was very common. So uh, one of the Jude, uh, Judas we see in the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, chapter 3, where um, we see Judas Iscariot, the apostle and the betrayer of Jesus. And again, we see in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and also in the book of Acts, we see Judas, an apostle, and who was the son of James, also called as Tadeus. So this Judas, not the Iscariot, we see in John chapter 14, verse 22, where he said, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? He asked to the Lord. We also see another Judas in the book of Acts chapter 37 where it says Judas of Galilee who led an insurrection and also in Acts 9 chapter 11 one second please Sorry, uh, sorry about that. There was a noise from outside. Okay, so we were talking about um, in John chapter 5, verse 37, where we see Judas of Galilee who led an insurrection. And in, 
in the same book in acts chapter 9 verse 11 we see judas the man of damascus who provided the home where Saul stayed after his conversion. So as we see several Judas in this book, we also see in the book of Acts chapter 15 verse 22 talks about a Judas who was also named as Barsabbas who traveled with Silas from Jerusalem delivering the degree from the council. And finally, the book of the author of this book Judas, who was the natural brother of Jesus. We see that in the book of Matthew and in the book of Mark talks about Judas, who was the natural brother of Jesus and who was the author of this book. Here we see in the introduction, Judas, chapter 1, verse 1 in the book of Judas. We see that Jude, a born servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to who? To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. And also we see this Judas in the book of Mark chapter 6. Can I request each of us to turn to some scripture so that it can be an interactive session? Can I request one of us to turn to Mark chapter 6 verse 3? Another person please turn to uh, yeah, uh, John ch or the same. Mark chapter 6, verse 3 to 6, one of us can read. And next person can turn to John chapter 7, verse 3 to 5. Mark chapter 6, verse 3 onwards. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own house is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Yes, so what we see here is Jude was the son of Mary and Joseph. We also see, and the brother of James, Joes, Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us. So they're relating to the siblings. And also, um, can I request one of us to turn to John chapter 7, verse 3 to 5, and read? John chapter 7, verse 3 to 5. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Zeli. So what we see here is, yes, Jude was numbered among Jesus' other siblings who were not immediately convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. And we also see that they traveled with Jesus on various occasions with his brothers. And, um, and we also see in John chapter 19, verse 25 to 27, we see that this Jude was absent at the foot of the cross when Jesus was crucified. We also see in John chapter 20, verse 19, where it says, Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. So what is he doing here? You see that he was among the first to receive the message of Christ's resurrection. And also, can I request one of us to turn Acts chapter 1, verse 14? Acts chapter 1, verse 14. And the other person, Jude chapter, uh, I mean, chapter 1, verse 17. So if you have taken Acts chapter 1, verse 14, can I request you to please read? Acts chapter 1 and verses 14. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Amen. 
So what we see, we see that Jude was one among the 120 in the upper room in anticipation for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit along with his mother Mary. And can can I request one of us to read verse 17 from the book of Jude? Jude you, yes, please. Jude chapter 1 and verses 17. But dear friends, remember what apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. Verse 17, Jude verse 17, but you beloved members, the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what we see also, we see here is he was not considered himself among the 12 apostles. So little is known beyond uh, about the man of Jude. Uh, so there are no reliable uh, information even in the tradition about his life or about the manner of his death. But Let's see on what occasion or what was the purpose of writing this book of Judah? Why was it considered to be included in the New Testament by the canon? We see that it was mostly written just after the book of Second Peter because it reflects the same concern. And we see that Jude writing this letter to give warning against the false ministries that were, uh, you know, trying to creep into the church, false doctrines that was adding and being increased. So we see that it is a very similar message to what Peter was writing in his letter to the, um, to the Jewish believers in the sphere of influence. So we see that um, the later epistle, it deals uh, subject to the false ministries and the apostasy. And he also tells us that there's a serious struggle for the faith in the early church history. So many believe that this struggle was associated with the persecution that was common during that time to weaken the faith of the believers or, um, you know, or, 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 or they were, uh, the persecution was high because uh, the, the number of believers were increasing. And we also see Jude identifies his audience in verse 1, saying that to those who are called, they were the audience, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. So he's addressing to the Jewish believers of his time. And, and not only then, we also uh, get to learn a lot of message from this book, where in verse 3 and 4, he says that, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Now, verse 4, he says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that Jude um, outlining the purpose of his writing in this verse. So when was this book of Jude written? Anyone from the class, were you able to go through the notes? Most likely, this book was written in the period of 66 to 80 AD. As you know, these dates are just approximate, but most scholars believe that this writing of this book was just after Second Peter. And um, it also feels that Jude may have been uh, familiar with Peter's work and was reiterating some of the main concerns of which Peter was addressing to his Jewish believers in the same way Jude is also reiterating to the Jewish believers about these false believers and the false ministry leaders who are 
who are trying to uh, rise up during his time. So what was the main message of Jude? We see he, he's been, though it is just one chapter with 25 verses, we see that it's been very important because he's addressing few concerns uh, about these false teachers or false ministry which was rising up in his time. And he's also warning them, not only them, he's also warning us through his letter because we see that in season, certain things kept rising. And even now we see that there are many false ministries among us. So we can take this book as a warning even to us. So uh, the first point we see that uh, in verse 3, we see that Jude is reminding us the true faith is a struggle for which we must contend. Uh, can I request one of us to read um, Jude chapter 3 and 4? Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Yeah, and also can I request another person? Sid, can you read 5 to 7? Jude chapter 1 verses 5 to 7 Though you already know all this I want you to remind I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt but later destroyed those who did not believe and the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their own home this he has this he has kept in the darkness bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and surrounding towns gave them, themselves up to sexual immorality and perversions. They serve as an example of those who suffered the punishment of eternal fire. Thank you. Thank you. So what we see, Jude, remind... Uh reminds the Jewish believers that the true faith is a struggle for which we must contend. We also see in verse 4, he's remind, he, warns, he warns us about the need to be an, on alert for the false ministries. And later part, we also see that Jude uh, marks out few characteristics of false ministers in verse 8 onwards when we read that. And from 5 to 7, we see that Jude foretells the eventual judgment upon the false ministries. And can I request, Zeli, if you can read from chap verse 8 till 19. As it's a small chapter, I thought we can read through the scriptures to understand better. Verse 8 to 19. Okay. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dare not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, "The Lord rebuke you." But this speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally like brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are supposed in your love feast, while they feast in, your, in you with, without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, let autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering 
stars of whom is reversed the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about this man also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are gamblers, complainers, walking according to their own laws, and they, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before you by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse uh, till 19. Oh. Okay, let me continue. Uh, verse 17. But you, beloved, remember these words which were spoken before you by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last times who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause division, not having the spirit. Thanks, thanks, John. So what we see here from verse 8 to 19, we see that Jude is giving an unflattering description of these false ministries, uh, which is very direct, which, which is very direct. He calls them you know, the dreamer or the filers of the flesh, uh, rejectors of the authority and who speak evils or uh, who speak evil of your dignitaries and you know um he, he calls them spots on your feast and so uh, you are the people who serve uh, serving themselves and you're like the clouds without water and we also see in verse 12 or uh, you're the autumn trees without fruit or twice dead and and uh, 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 he also says in further in verse 13, he talks about the uh, raging waves of the sea, wandering stars. You're like the murmurers and complainers. And um, uh, in further verse down, we see that uh, you're a flatterer, you're a mocker or walking according to your own lust. And he also uh, addresses them as void of the spirit. So these are something that uh, Jude has been very direct in addressing these false teachers. And uh, we also see what is the unique feature in this book. Uh, first is we see that the clear connection that this book to Second Peter is where we read in the uh, in the book of Second Peter, we read that um, certain concerns are similarities like immediately where we notice the striking similarities is addressing the false teachers and it's very clear that jude quoted other writers in this book it is it is a very common opinion that jude was familiar with the works of peter and used his book to uh, bring what peter foretold into the actual time of jude's writing we also see that uh, peter had foretold about the false teachers that they would come and in the book of Jude, we see that Jude wanted his right readers to know what they have arrived in now. So the description of the, uh, we also see the description of the apostolic ministry from verse 11 on us, um, apostate ministry that is from the Old Testament. He, he talks about the way of Cain. And we also see he talks about the error of Balaam, the rebellion of Korah, and uh, and also uh, the rebellion of Korah in the path of presumption and rejecting the authorities. He warns them with the Old Testament uh, uh, events or the situations of what they went through so that people will be warned and aware of what's happening in the present time during uh, Jude's days and we also see that there is a need to contend for the faith in uh, in in verse 3 we we read that 
that is the second part of verse 3 we read that i found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints so here we see that jude is contending on the word faith is different than the contending for faith we all we are all to walk by faith and therefore must strive to grow in that faith but there is also a common salvation which can be described in this faith that is there is a body of belief that need to pass through through christ to the apostles on this into the church age so we also see the believers uh, uh, today is inseparably linked to the apostolic church and are responsible to preserve this faith which was delivered to us by the apostles so here we see uh, even in the book of titus we see that how paul spoke of the common faith when he was addressing the letter to titus and we also see in the book of galatians paul urged people to receive no other gospel but the gospel of jesus christ we see that paul was stressing on the true go gospel he was giving the message of jesus christ yes there was a warning but he was also sharing this is the true gospel which we need to hold on to and we also see paul writing in first corinthians and also to the thessalonians where paul urged people to mark those who did not correspond to the tradition handed down to them we also see in the book of philemon uh, sorry philippians can i request one of us to turn to philippians chapter 1 verse 27 Philippians chapter 1 verse 27 if you have taken can we read Philippians chapter 1 and verses 27 whatever happens conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ then whether i come and see you or only hear about in my absence i will know that you stand firm in one spirit contending as one man for the faith of the gospel amen thank you thank you sir so what we see here is paul encouraging the philippian church saying stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel so we see jude and paul both urged the believers to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered by the apostles by the disciples to you we also see the unique details that has been cited in this book that is in verse 9 verse 9 where uh, where we see contention over the body of moses so there are couple of piece of information that we see that is found in the book of jude and that is not found in any other book of the new testament the source of information comes extra biblical record that is contained in the oral tradition and some of the apocryphal writings of the old testament era like the book of enoch uh, where we see some of the prophecies of enoch has been addressed in verse 14 and 15 um, and also uh, yeah we see that that has been taken from the book of enoch of of the old testament though it is not included in our bible but then there is a writing so jude has taken the oral writing of them and i have added it in verse 14 yeah so the closing verse can i request one of us to read from verse 20 to 25 Jude chapter 1 verses 20 to 25 But you dear friends build yourself up in the most holy faith and pray in holy spirit keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Christ Jesus to bring you eternal life be merciful to those who doubt snatch others from the fire and save them to others show mercy mixed with fear hating even the clothes stained by corrupted flesh 24 to him who is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only god our savior be glory majesty power and authority through jesus christ our lord before all ages amen. now and forevermore amen amen thank you said thank you so we see as we read from verse 20 to 25 we also see a key word that is keep or kept so the last few verses here we see that the believers responsibility in relation to themselves and to others so verse 20 to 21 we see that uh, they were asked to keep themselves in the love of god by building themselves up in the holy faith by praying in the holy spirit so it is very important for each of us to pray in spirit that we can have the love of God, where we can build ourselves and others in the love of God. And in verse 22 to 23, we see that not only them, it also applies to us. We, we are asked to have mercy. We are asked to have mercy on others and save them out from the fire of hell. So there is a mes message here. Now, why should we have mercy? Why should we have mercy? So what happens if you have mercy? Anyone from the class? Why is it important for us to have mercy? Anyone? Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. I think it is important to have mercy because we were also we were also given mercy when we were yet sinners. So it is just to reciprocate it because we were deserved death, but God, through His grace and mercy, He sent His Son to us. So we should do the same to others. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Lubega. Yes, that was right. As we have received mercy from Jesus, we need to we need to show mercy. Even when we were sin, we were in sin. You know, Jesus had mercy on us and he redeemed us. And we have been made righteous through Christ Jesus. So we need to have mercy on others and save them out of the fire. So we also see in Matthew 14, 14. What do we see? Can I request one of us to turn to Matthew 14, 14 and read? Matthew chapter 14 and verses 14. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. So what happened? Jesus had compassion on them and healed them from sickness. Compassion, being mercy, always leads us into action. Mercy or compassion always leads us into action. Love leads us into action. The love of Christ, the mercy of God, the compassion of God always leads us into an action. So here Jude is encouraging us in verse 22 to 23, is encouraging us that we need to have this mercy of God, compassion of God, the love of God within us so that we can look at people with that same compassion, love and mercy so that we can share the good news with others and save them out of the fire of hell. So this compassion this mercy should be within us so that we can be that person of action and also in verse 24 verse 24 we see that they have to look to god who is able to keep them from stumbling it's not that, okay, now we have received Jesus as a Lord and sta Savior. We are believers. We have been made strong. I will not stumble. No, we are not perfect. We are human. We are still human beings. We need the grace of God every day in our life so that we can keep ourselves from stumbling. We need to look to God to get that grace. 
every no matter how skillful we may be how talented we may be still there are chances for us to stumble the scripture says the bible says in um, you know the man solomon who were high in wisdom who had the gift of wisdom from god but what happened he also stumbled no matter how gifted how skillful we are but in our daily life we need to look to god we need to look to god by humbling ourselves and looking up to god asking god god give us the grace to keep us from everything around us that we may not stumble because you know there are temptation the enemy that is outside is waiting like the roaring lion why is he waiting like a roaring lion to kill steal and destroy the believers so we especially we who have received jesus as our lord and savior who are ministering to others who are leading others especially we need to humble ourselves under the hand of god and look up to him every day and ask god we need more of your grace without you we cannot lead we cannot teach we cannot minister to another person we need you we need more of you more of your grace only by the strength of god we can be strengthened and when we receive the strength from the source of god we can strengthen other believers we can raise other believers we see the same thing happen in the apostles life they looked up to god they never exalted in them they never exalted with the gift of god that was given in them even though people uh, uh, even though people in different places where they ministered saw great and mighty things happen through apostle paul peter and others and people when they exalted them as god they rebuked them they tore their clothes they were grieved for looking to a human as god they gave all glory to god saying that god did this through us and that's it we are just human we are just a human vessel let's give all glory to god because he has chose us to be used for his glory so unlike that if each and every leader if we can look up to god he can use us and help and and keep us from stumbling especially from every temptation that is around us and keep us from stumbling and we uh, can minister to people and especially in the book of jude where is war- warning on the false teachers and false teaching and false doctrine that was crippling into the church so the leaders must be rooted in the word of god into the gospel of jesus christ so that our teaching will be rooted in christ and not in something else our belief will be in christ so that we know the right from wrong so that's why uh, even paul um, you know uh, whenever there's false teaching or false doctrine been rising around them we see the apostles sharing the gospel time and again again and again what happens so that the right teaching will be rooted and grounded in people so no matter how how many false teachers rises up uh, you know how matter how fast the false teaching can spread like the forest fire uh, like how uh, peter also describes we need uh, we can be assured that the true teaching that we have reiterated again and again will keep the believers from falling into or into any of these kind of teaching so what we need to do is we need to time and again teach the gospel share the gospel again and again so that the right teaching will be in the heart of the believer okay that's what the scripture says the truth will set them free we don't have to uh, condemn any of the false teachers or we don't have to take their points and uh, again and again say that is not right we have to just proclaim the gospel again and again and again because the gospel has the power to change to transform and give understanding to the believers for them to understand what is right from wrong so even we as leaders as ministry leaders we can also be encouraged from the epistle of jude to share the gospel of truth to others so that 
the believers can be aware uh, be aware of the false teachings that is around them. So with that, we conclude the book of Jude. Now we'll open up to the class for them to share, add uh, any points that can be that we have missed out and we can learn more from the book of Jude. We'll open it to the class. Please feel free to unmute your mic and go ahead and share so that we all can learn together. Anyone from the class, Anita, Brother Lubega, Jafina, Zeli, Aradhana, please feel free to unmute and share. Yes, Brother Success, please go ahead, you know. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Uh, I, want to, I want to really appreciate you for your teaching, Thank you for lecturing us. And I want to emphasize oh, this time is best time for us in Nigeria. And I will first I listened to it and I, I was so although I'm following up, I'm on transit, but I'm following up. If we can be able to have this time in the next section, next semester, it will be better for us so that all of us can be able to gain a lot of knowledge. It's not by listening to the tape, but when you are doing it, this interaction will be there. So thank you so much for keeping it to this time. I'm grateful. Ma'am, you are on mute. Can you hear me? I can't thank hear you, you. Thank you, Enoch, for sharing. Sorry, sorry, my mic was muted. I didn't notice that. Thank you, Enoch, for sharing. Praise God. Uh, yes. The timing is good, yes. Uh, Brother Lubega, would you like to share uh, on the book of Jude that we all can learn? Anita, Brother Isaac, Zeli, John, Jeffina, anyone? Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. Uh, to me, I see two things in the book of Jude, number one. It was a second thought book. When you look at what he says, he says, I was supposed to write for you about this, but I'm forced to write you about this. So it really shows that uh, as believers, we should also have second thoughts on so many things because much as it is uh, the, the Holy Spirit is the one who was directing these guys and writing these books, we don't re really get tired. There is always even a human perspective in the story. Number two, I see how this guy was humble. By not measuring. I'm not too sure. Is it only for me? Uh, Brother Lubega, voice is breaking. Is it with others also? Yes, uh, we, are not, we are not able to hear you, Brother Lubega. I was saying, uh, the first thing I was saying is that um, it's a second thought kind of book whereby he was supposed to write something different. And after that, because he had a problem, he, mm -hmm. he said it. That means as a believer, application-wise, we should always not say that the idea that came to me first is what I'm going to talk about. Number two, I like the humbleness of Jude. He does, he, mm -hmm. everybody, like if I was, it was, he was in my position, I would write quickly and say that I'm a brother to Jesus Christ. <laughs> but uh, he's so humble in a way that he doesn't mention that. But of course, he whispers in our ears and he says, I'm a brother to James, <laughs> the, the brother of Jesus Christ. So I like his humbleness. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yes, yes. In the very first verse, he says, I'm the born servant of Jesus Christ. And then he addresses like I'm the brother of G uh, James. That's nice. Yes. So they see him as a son of God, the Messiah. And even we see the same with James as also. Yes, that's nice. Anyone else would like to add? 
Brother Isaac, Zeli, John. So tomorrow uh, we will be studying on the last book of New Testament. Okay, and then uh, I would request, I hope everyone would have started to write the summary, the assignment on New Testament so that when I create the post on the Google Classroom, I would request you all to please upload your uh, document on the Google Classroom. It can be in a PPT format or in the Word doc format, okay? And there will be a due date and time given. Request everyone to upload your assignments on time, just not for my subject, even for the other subjects, so that you'll not miss on grading. If in case, even though you would have attended your classes, but you have not submitted any of your assignments, then you may have to redo the course again. So just to avoid that, I request you all to please take some extra time to complete your assignments and upload it. Okay, so with that, we end this session. I request one of us to pray and dismiss us. Jafina, can I request you to pray? Anyone else would like to pray? If your mic is fine. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We are grateful for the lessons that we learned today. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the book of Jude that you have given us. We pray, O oh God, that you are faithful to keep us to, till the end, O oh God, and we I want to thank you for reminding about that. Lord, we pray and submit all of us into your presence. And we ask, O oh God, that help us to continue to be in front of your presence with the attitude of thanksgiving. We pray, Lord Jesus, you would continue to make us strong in your presence. We thank you for Pastor Diana. We thank you for the entire class. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining in today's session. God bless. See you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.